Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, June 20th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. We got a couple of interesting diaries over the long weekend. Uh, first of all, Brad uh, published another one of his uh, walkthroughs, this time an other case of forum book actually there's a little bit of focus of brad uh, this month it does arrive as an email with an excel attachment this attachment is actually exploiting a rather old vulnerability 2017 and that is then being used uh, to load an executable this executable will after a reboot uh, because that's sort of how it makes itself uh, persistent also download and base64 encoded dll that then loads a form book form book is a pretty common kind of piece of malware has been around for a while and brad has been written about this in the past but it's one of those malware that sort of keeps uh, changing also the infection chain how it ends up on system keeps uh, changing Interesting that it uses this old vulnerability here in this case, but that's also part of some of this malware where it's going after systems that are out of date, that don't have antivirus enabled, pretty much sort of after less sophisticated users, which tend to be more vulnerable. A week or so ago, we had a guest diary by Gephardt who looked into how to use a simple script in order to brute force passwords for encrypted zip files. The main intent here was to break the passwords often used by malicious attachments. There are, of course, different ways to solve this particular problem. In a diary this weekend, Didier shows how to use his zipdump.py script to do the same thing. Basically, brute force these passwords at pretty good speed. He's getting 25,000 passwords a second on the laptop that he used. Nothing really about the specific specs of the laptop, but basically not sort of a dedicated password cracking machine. And DD wrote up an interesting malware that he found it arrives as a .inf file. Actually, I'm sort of surprised if we don't see more of that because .inf files are typically used to install drivers. They have instructions how to install the particular driver. And of course, some of these instructions may actually include code to run. The particular section of interest here is the run pre setup command section. So before the actual file is being set up, uh, you can run an arbitrary command and the attacker apparently is using it here to run PowerShell and with that download additional code and then execute it. Xavier so also provides additional details like what the particular PowerShell script exactly does and uh, what it installs. So refer to Xavier's diary for details. And we got an interesting blog post by Fricos. Uh, this uh, blog post has details regarding uh, two vulnerabilities in 40 NAC. And now this blog post was uh, prompted by earlier releases last year about vulnerabilities in the HTTPS service of 40 NAC. Fricos here uh, took a look at some of the other services listening on Fortinac and found these two additional vulnerabilities. In order to be actually exposed to the vulnerabilities, you have to open up port 1050 and 5555. These are the servers that are vulnerable here. A patch was apparently released by FortiGuard in April, but this patch did not actually acknowledge these two vulnerabilities. So be aware that there are some important or actually critical vulnerabilities that are being patched here. These ports are usually not exposed, uh, so you may be lucky here in that uh, you're not exploitable uh, if you're not exposing these, these ports, but definitely uh, don't forget to apply this April patch to your Fortinac devices. And then just a quick reminder, because it sort of came out late last week, you may not have seen it, but we are now up to 
three vulnerabilities in MoveIt. I highly recommend that you don't just apply the patches, but continue to not expose HTTP, HTTPS. These vulnerabilities are very related to each other. They're apparently all SQL injection vulnerabilities. I would not be surprised at all to see more vulnerabilities like this coming up in the next couple of weeks. So be careful with exposing MoveIt, even if it's completely patched. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks for listening. Just a reminder, there will be no podcast tomorrow on Wednesday, the 21st, because I'll be traveling. So uh, talk to you again on Thursday. Bye.